Today's daf is daf mem beis. The mission says Amudar Hanome Chavero, so he prohibits his friend with a neder in joining his friend from having Hanof from his possessions. So Ruven is the Madir, Shimon is the Mudar. And the Mishnah is going to distinguish between two scenarios. One is in which this neder was taken before Shvius, before the inception of Shemitah, and the other where it was taken on Shemitah itself, during Shemitah. So first the Mishnah takes up the case of Lifnei Shvius, and the Mishnah says, Eino yored l'soch sadeu, the mudar is enjoined from entering into the field of the madir because when he walks through the rishus, the domain of the madir of his friend, that's considered hano, and it's also be mudar hano. And this is a reflection of the shita of Eliezer that we learned about earlier in the in the mesechta that even the Hano of Drisas Regal in the Chatz of his friend or the Madir is also prohibited, even though people are not makpit on that. But it's a koldu, it's a Hano of a minimum uh, of a minimum size, so to speak. V'yeno ochel min hanotos, and he cannot eat from the peros, meaning the mudar, that we call him Shimon, is not allowed to eat from the fruits of Ruvain, these fruits that are on the side, that let's say they there's a tree on the borderline that has foliage that crosses beyond the border so that there's no need to enter into the field. But nevertheless, the mudar is not permitted to eat those fruits because in so doing, he'd be nena, he'd be having hana and benefit from the madir. So that even though he doesn't have to enter into the field because these fruits overlap into the Shusarabim, but nevertheless the fruits are still owned by the Madir, and the Mudar is enjoined from having benefit by eating these fruits from the Madir. But now, Ubishvius, supposing the Nether took place during the Shemitah cycle, when the Torah says that the field is Hefker, then on the one hand, Eino Yored L'Soch Sadeu, and the Mudar is not allowed to enter into the field, and we'll have to see why, Aval Ochel Humenan but the fruits do not belong to the Madir, they are public property, so to speak, because Shviyas Afkat de Malk is Mafkir, his Peros, and therefore, the mudar is eating the peros without entering into the field of the madir and enjoying peros of shviyas. He is not in any way enjoying the fruits that are owned by the madir because it's shemitah. Now, what happens in a case where the nether took place before shemitah and now the shemitah comes and is mafkir his peros? That's the safe of this mission. Nodar himenu machol. If he took a neder, that his friend should not enjoy the benefits of Achila from the fruits of his field. And when was this neder taken? Lifnei Shviyas. So again, at the time that the neder was taken, certainly it was Chal. And these payrolls became Osur, the neder, to the Mudar, to Shimon. But now it's Shviyas. Yored l'soch sadeu. The Torah says that a field is open to the public during the seventh year, and the Madir cannot claim ownership that would prevent someone from entering into this field. And therefore, he's allowed to enter into the field, and not only because it's Shviyas, but also because, in this case, in the Sefer, he was Madir Heimenu Machal, eating, so that entering into the field is no longer a problem. The Eino Ochel Menaperos, if it's Erev Shviyas, on the 6th, he's not allowed to eat from the Peros. But Ube Shviyas, Yored V'Ochel. When Shviyas comes around, then he's allowed to enter into the field and even eat from the Peros of the field. Now, 
we're going to have to add the following comment based on the Ran, and that is that Ubishvius means that the Neder was taken on the seventh year itself. And therefore, there's no Issa to get off the ground at all because the Mudas let eat the payrolls. He's allowed to enter into the field. The Torah permits him because of the Allah of Hefker during Shemiz, and everything is Mutter. Now, Let's go back for a moment and retrace our steps to the race of this Mishnah. So since the nether was a full-fledged nether to prohibit Hanoah for the Mudar for Shimon, then he can't enter into the field. That would be considered Hanoah, as we said before, going to Rabbi Eliezer. And he certainly can't eat from the peros because he's mudar hanof michavero. Now, im hidiro b'shvius, then he's allowed the mudar to eat from the peros, but he's not allowed to enter into the field. And we're not we're not exactly sure why that's so. You would think that if he took the neder during the course of the shvius in the seventh year, then the access to the peros is a free for all. The Torah allows anyone to have access, and therefore he's not, and by entering to the field, he's not in any way getting benefit from the owner of the field. But the Mishnah goes on to say that's only in a case where he prohibits Hanah, but if he was in a situation where he prohibited Ochel, and once again, we're talking Lifnei Shviyas, then he's allowed to enter into the field, it says, Yorid L'Soch Sadeu, because the Prohibition was limited in scope to Achila, so that by being Nenef from entering into the field, he's not violating the Neder. But of course, he's enjoined from eating the Peros. So he can use his friend, the Madir's field as a shortcut, but he can't eat from the Peros inside. But then the Mishnah goes on to say that if the Neder was taken on Shviz, then the Mudra Noah is allowed, number one, to enter into the field, number two, to eat the fruits of the field. So one would wonder why in the Reisha, when he was Madr Hanoah, would the Mudar be enjoined from having access to the field and entering into the field, albeit even if I can see that that's a Hanoah, but nevertheless... It's Shvius, and in Shvius he has no rights over the entry into the field. So that's a question that we're going to have to we're we're going to have to analyze. Now the Gemara says the following: We have Rav and Shmuel on the one side, and Rav Yochan Reish Lakish on the other. Rav and Shmuel the Amitra Vayit. They maintain that nechasim elu olecha. If the formulation, the nusach of the neder was nechasim elu olecha, so the konam is creating an iser in the nechasim, and the neder was taken lifnei shvius. Eino yored letoch sadeu v'eino ochel min hanotos. Since the neder took place before Shvius, when the Sada and the Paris growing in the Sada belong to the Madir to Ruven, the neder is Chal. Afal <coughs> P. So once the Konum was Chal on the Paros, that Konum, that Isa that's Chal, the Chefts of the Paros, remains even after the Paros 
are removed by virtue of the Torah law of Shvi's from the ownership and the possession of the Madu. So it's no longer his. At this point, he cannot impose a nether on his parents. But since he took the nether before Shvi's, generating an Easter in the hefts of the Peros, that Easter remains even after the emergence of Shvi's. However, in Bishvius, not of the if the nether was taken Bishvius, then although again we don't know why, but any yored so they have all ochel minaperes and notos. So those fruits that are growing outside of the boundaries of the field, and therefore they are accessible to anyone, even without entering into the field, that the muder is allowed to eat, meaning that the baal of the of the field of the sod has no rights to prohibit during Shvius an Easter nether on the payrolls when the Torah says they're not your payrolls. And now the Gemara quotes the dissenting view of Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish, the Amish Ravayu, Nechosai Olecha, if he takes the nether on the Nechosim with Neishviyas, Eni Yor Lutok Sadei Vein Ochel Min Anotos, but he Gia Shviyas, which we said that according to Rav and Shmuel, once Shvius comes about, the Mudar is allowed to eat these peros. But wait a second, that was only in the case where what? Where he took the neder before Shvius. I'm sorry, he took the neder during Shvius. Now, what's going to be, what's going to be the deal according to Rabbi Shmuel? If he took the neder before Shvius, now it's Shvius. We said Afal Pishi Gia Shvius. The Easter in the in the Hefta of the Peros continues to exist. So where where is the point of contention of Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish? So I have a suspicion that we should emphasize the fact that the nusach of the neder, as formulated by Rabbi Yochari Shlokish, is nechasai olecha. Which means he didn't say nechasim elu, but rather he said nechasai olecha. It's my fruits. And therefore, he giyashviz ochel es hanotos. He's allowed to eat the peros. It's not 100% clear that Rav and Shmuel would reject the Shita of Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish in a case of Nechasai Olecha. Because the emphasis on Nechasai indicates that the Nedah should only be binding as long as it is, Nechasai, and should terminate once his Bailus terminates. So when we go back to the Mishnah, and the Mishnah uses the term lifne shnas hashviyas, which means that he took the neder, the Madi took the neder before shviyas came about. And when the Mishnah says ubeshviyas, meaning after shviyas arrived, even if he took the neder beforehand, then certainly, according to Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish, the Mishnah would allow, with the onset of Shvius, for the Mudar to have benefit from. Where Let's go back to Rav and Shmuel. Rav and Shmuel would maintain that since he took the neder before Shvius and there's a chalos iser in the hefts of the Peros, they remain an Osir even after Hagar Shviz. And therefore, when the Mishnah is Matir Bishviz, that's only in a case of Nadar Bishviz, whereas according to Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish, the Mishnah would be Matir even if he took the Nether before Shviz, because one Shviz, but excited, we explained it, which again, we're jumping to the Maskana of the Gemara, the Gemara doesn't know this now, that 
the difference is because Rabbi Yochanan is talking about a different formulation of the nether where he said nechasai. The Gemara thinks lema b'haka mifligi that there's a machlokas between Rav and Shmuel on the one hand, Rabbi Yochanan Shlokish on the other. Rav and Shmuel savri adam ose dovish b'shusa filuk shiyetzei mershuso. A person could engender a chalushem iser in the chefta, and that chalushem iser remains even after the object, and in this case the peros left his rishus, and therefore if he was no there before shvius generating an Isa Hefta inherent in the Peros, that Isa Hefta remains even after the onset of Shviz. Whereas Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish Savri, Einodem Osa Dover Shebeshuso, Lechshietze Beshuso. Even though now it's mine, I cannot impose an Isa that would be Chal, even after my Rishus, my Bailus is Paka. And the Gemara says, Vitizbara, is that interpretation of the Machlokas really correct? Is there really an opinion that would deny the Lumbus the concept and principle that once you created an Isa the Hefta, that Isa remains even after your Rishus is Paka? Because in Cain, if it's true that, as you formulated, Rav and Shmuel would insist that the Iser is Paka, I'm sorry. Rav and Shmuel, the way we're interpreting it now in the Havamina, would insist that the Isur, um, sorry, I, I, I apologize. I mentioned Rav and Shmuel. I meant to say Rish Lokish and Rabbi Yochan would insist that even though the Isur was Chal, in the heft, so when it was his, nevertheless, the Easter is paka after it leaves his rishus. And the Gemara says in Cain, if that's the case, Niflugu, why didn't the Amoraim formulate the Machlokes bin Chasim Elu? That even in the case of Nechasim Elu, we didn't mention his bailus over the Nechasim. Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish would insist that the Isa is Paka with the onset of Shviz. And then we would have understood the Kolshken in the case of Nechasai, where he mentions my bailus. But instead, Rabbi Yochan Reish Lakish only mentioned their Chiddush that the Isser is Paka in the case of Nechasai, implying that if he had not mentioned Nechasai in the formulation of his nether and emphasized his ownership over the over the Nechas, if he just would have said Nechas and Elu, then even Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish would agree that the Easter is Paka. <laughs> right, it seems that Rabbi Yochai Shlokish are putting the emphasis on the word Nechasai. That's why the Easter is Paka and Shviz. Why didn't Rabbi Yochai Shlokish tell me a bigger Chiddush? That even in the case of Nechasim Elu, where he didn't mention his Bailus, once the Easter is Chal and the Hefta, despite that, the fact that the Easter is Chal and the Hefta, once it leaves his Rishus, it's Paka, which is Visu, and furthermore, Hotnan, we have a Mishnah Baba Kamakuv Ches, the Olam Oser Dovashabishusel, she ate him a Shusel. 
We're going to prove from a mission of a comma that a person can generate an Easter, and that Easter, once it's Chal, continues to exist even after his Bible is Parka. This night we learned in a Mishnah. Ha'omer libno, a man says to his son, Arini, Oser Alecha Bisa Konom es Kol Mashaton Nene Li. Meaning he asks upon his son a neder not to get Hano from him. And that Easter is only Chal during the lifetime of his father, but mess with the death of the father, Yerashena, the Ben inherits his father. Unless the father adds Bechayov Ubimoso. He says explicitly that he's ushering the Nechosim on his son, both during the son's, both during his own lifetime and even after, even after his death. 